اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين بحكمتك وانثر علينا من خزائن علمك اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك بكل شيء عليم وبالإجابة قدير نعم المولى ونعم النصير All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds and may Allah send his blessings and prayers to our Prophet Muhammad, to his followers, to his family and to the followers and to his followers till the day of judgment. I start with the salutation of Islam, which is Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. I would like to start by thanking uh, Islamic Culture Society for hosting this session. And I cannot maybe thank all the people who worked actually to make this happen today, tonight. So, uh, I mean, uh, the supervisor or the head of the society is here, uh, Mahmoud al Awadi. thanks so much. And also those people actually who worked hard, I mean, behind the scenes. Also, I would like to thank you all for coming to this late session. I know most of you are busy with other commitments. You have your own schedules and maybe other you know, commitments. But I hope that, inshallah, as we believe coming to such a session would enlighten us. And may Allah bestow his blessings and mercy on us. This is how we believe. I mean, we, I don't believe, inshallah, it's going to be a waste of time. Even if you don't benefit anything, just coming here, seeing you here, uh, supporting each other, you will be rewarded for that. And this is part of the, it's part of the, of the topic. I mean, uh, having this belief inside you is part of the topic. I mean, this belief as a Muslim you believe that you are enriching your spirituality by attending such sessions, by supporting each other, by being with other brothers and sisters for the sake of goodness. So this is the topic, as you see, challenges of spiritual life in modern times. In modern times, uh, this topic actually, maybe it's attractive, an attractive topic, but um, it's not something new that I am bringing to the stage. It's something have been actually discussed a um, long time ago and we don't know when, but it has not been recorded that that was the first time people discussed this topic. But why are we discussing it today? What's the, what's the point? The point is that Human beings uh, come and go. People come to an era when they maybe tend to deviate maybe from their purpose in life. I mean, we see things, we observe, we go out, we see people actually changing, people are changing. People, maybe, we see there's a trend that people are heading somewhere. So, as a Muslim, uh, I believe that it's ev everyone's, I mean, every, it's every Muslim's obli uh, obligation to guide people, to show them, to clarify things, to explain things. And we should not wait for, um, we should not wait for someone, I mean, I mean, don't just wait for, uh, depend on others. Someone will clarify it. It's not my job. We see a lot of things on, on YouTube. And people are doing that voluntarily, without getting maybe money. Why should we wait for someone? I mean, it's good that they are doing, I mean, good things. I'm talking about the positive side of YouTube. Education, uh, explaining things, teaching something. I always ask myself, why not me? Why not I that... I should be the person who is a proactive, who is initiating, I mean, the thing in YouTube. Why should we wait for other people 
although we have that, th I mean, we know, we may know certain like, you know, skills, but we are always consumers, consumers. Why should we just contribute like other people? So I thought of, of speaking about this topic just as maybe clarifying some points regarding this issue. And as you see, spirituality is a talk of history. It's not something new. But I may start by eliciting from you some answers, just to see where should we stand, because uh, this topic, we need to have a platform that we are all stand on, so we can continue the journey till the end. So I just want to hear from you. I raised some questions and I just want like quick answers from you. What comes to your mind when you read this spirituality? What is spirituality in your point of view? What do you link it with? How do you look at it? Where are you from it? Can I just like listen to some answers? You don't have to be, I mean, I mean to prepare well for it, but just instant, I mean instant, I mean answers, spontaneous answers. Sorry, what is this sound? Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, Khalfan. That means for me, as a rest of our internal life, like spirit, like emotions. Again, can you say it again? That means for me, as a rest of our my internal body. Yeah, it's part of your internal body. Yes. yes. Like my hair, like my. So if I have a spiritual life, I can, uh, I can feel the rest in my in my emotion, in my behavior also. So. Yeah, your answer is correct and it's part of it, yes. I mean, it's part of you. It's part of the thing that you live with. Yeah. Any yes, please? Spirituality is uh, many times uh, overlaps with religion as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people who would talk about spirituality would bring, bring in the notion of religion together with it. So it, sometimes it becomes like a gray area. It is many times indiscernible. Yes, I mean, it comes with religion. Why? Because most religions be be believe in the spirit. So yeah, it's very connected to the religion. And the scriptures, they spoke about this a lot. Because, I don't want now to go into details, but yes, thank you. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. It's a source of life. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when, I, when I hear and, uh, of the title, I thought of the human being being composed of different elements, and one of them is the spiritual component. And I thought that I'm going to hear something about fulfilling this indispensable element in the human being. Yes. It's an indispensable element in the body. It's something we don't see, but we believe in it, right? So we can shorten that. I mean, by these answers, maybe we can just skip some, you know, uh, slides. Yes, uh, anybody else? Yes. Yes, Karen. I think our spirituality guides us. We an internal guide. We know what's right and wrong. And empathy and things like that, compassion that go on with people. That's part of our spiritual life, part of our spirituality. Excellent. We don't have that. We have no compassion if we have no. Excellent. Yes, it's something in it that has maybe qualities. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we can move on. So, this is a quick outline I prepared just to actually discuss the topic. So I may just discuss some of the concepts, then we speak about the challenges, then at the end, maybe the Islamic path. I mean, how does Islam view these things? And what is how we walk on the path to improve our spirituality? So I asked you this question. Now, some people, they have misconceptions. I mean, when you say spirituality, what comes to their mind? 
they just think about the negative side or the some of the existing part of it with some people. So to hate life. And this existed even in the books, you'll find it. That hate life. Okay, if it means what what should you do? Huh? Abandon. Huh? Yeah, you ab yes, you abandon life. I mean, see, I mean, see, these are, I mean, real, I mean, uh, sorry. I'm not saying these are not real, but misconceptions, they don't have a clear idea or a full picture of the concept itself. When you say Islam is terrorism, what does it show? It's misconception. Because Islam is not terrorism, but that what comes to their mind because of such and such. So the, clear, the picture is not clear. So people may shun, shun, shun spirituality because they, they don't have the clear picture and they haven't got, have got it from the pure source. It's material life also, to hate material life, sorry, that's what. To hate material life, is spirituality about hating material life? A question. Because you will find it. As I told you, it exists with some people. Just be away from material life. To hate earth. Yeah. And people interpret things by themselves. I mean, is it to hurt earth? So if you hate earth, are you going to destroy it? Yes. Because some people now, they are looking for life outside earth. Because they have destroyed the earth and they are looking now, looking I mean, for life in Mars and other planets. They don't think about fixing this life. Because they hate Earth, they want to destroy it. They have these nuclear, you know, weapons or, ma or weapons of mass destruction. And if they go to another planet, are they going to destroy it? Of course, if they hate life, they hate Earth, they hate whatever is connected to that. So this is wrong. We are not going to hate all these things. Okay, what is this? Be away from people. This is true. Some people have this idea. To be a spiritual person, be away from people. Why? Because they distort your life. They make you busy. They keep you away from God. So, it's not by that way. It doesn't mean if, you, if people cause something, it means that we just avoid all of them. But this happened in history. So that's why some people, they just generalize, okay? Just worship all the time, pray, fast every day, read, recite Holy Quran. That's spirituality. And I'm sorry to say this. Some Muslims, they understand spirituality in this way. They don't, for example, I don't want to give like specific examples, but it's good just to clarify what I, I mean here. Um, for example, some people, they just want to, to have more deeds, what should they do? What do they do? They just confine themselves somewhere in the house and they don't help other people in the house. For example, a man would, or a boy or a gentleman would just sit somewhere in the house, corner himself somewhere, and then would not help anybody in the house. Why? I am worshiping God, don't speak to me. For some ladies, the same thing. They just don't help their mothers or anything in the house. Why? I am memorizing the Quran. So, so what? Does that mean you just be, keep yourself away? So they just, I mean, they have misunderstanding religion. So they focus on this and they ignore the other and they forgot. They are reciting Quran, but they say in Arabic something. Kam qarin lil Quran wal Quran yal'anum. So some people recite Quran, but the Quran is cursing them. Not literally, of course. But the Quran is asking you to help other people. The Quran is asking you to be good to your parents. So why are you being bad to your parents? What are you doing? They don't know. They just, that's their understanding. So it doesn't mean that. If you want to be a spiritual person, it doesn't mean you just forget or ignore or neglect other responsibilities and duties. You need to balance that. Connect to other spirits. Would you like to be a spiritual person? Yes. But what, what's in their mind? 
to connect with other spirits. This is their understanding, that if you become a spiritual person, it means that you speak to genies, you speak to angels. This is what they believe in. This is misconception, this is wrong. And can you come up with some other misconceptions that come to your mind, please? Finished? Do you believe that I finished everything? No, but if you are only, you know, hints for you. Well, I think spirituality is different things to different people. And so it's kind of hard to say what misconceptions are because they may not be something Yes, I agree with you. you. Know what I mean? Yes, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Because some people, they have their own notions and their own definitions. And they have maybe formed a theory because they have become maybe pioneers in that area. So, and there are some followers. So it became a school after that. So it became maybe recognized. Then people speak about them, record it in books, and then, yes, that's what they mean. I mean, but I'm speaking here, uh, let's restrict our, you know, talk here. Generally speaking, it's an Islamic understanding of spirituality. Because if we, I'm, I'm not actually an expert in other religions, so I try to, I mean, make it here more focused into the Islamic understanding. And these misconceptions, actually, generally, I'm speaking in Islam. Like some people, you know, miss or deviate from the path. This is like, unless you want to add something. Karen? No, I'm thinking. <laughs> I may add something else. Okay. No worries. Okay, so let's see, speak about these, you know, spirits because we cannot, I mean, uh, discuss this topic if we don't know the, con the, the key words and the main words in this topic. Spirit. What is a spirit? A soul. A soul. Yes. Actually, in, let's say, in general field, or let's say in, what is it, in, in a general context, sometimes we use them exchangeably. But in a technical, let's say, a technical usage, uh, they are not the same. So, spirit is that entity that gives you life. We are body and spirit. So the spirit is that thing as the maybe sister over there said the heart will not, I mean, I don't want to be so medical, I mean, uh, speaking a medical, you know, from a medical perspective because uh, maybe that is not my area. But in Islam, the heart can beat without a spirit. I mean, in Islam, as some narrations, maybe Matasam can verify this, some narrations say that uh, you are given the spirit after three months or after 120 days, but your heart started beating, I mean, I mean, sometime before that, is this true? I mean, is that hadith is true? Uh, is it authentic? Yeah, Ibn Mas'ud narrated that. So I don't want like to link, I mean, uh, uh, the blowing of the spirit into a human being with the movement of the body. Because some scholars said like, uh, that is uh, um, automatic or uh, unintentional movement of the body or the limbs. But the spirit is the thing that, because also plants, you know, the plants, they move. They have life, but they don't have spirit. So the spirit is the thing that you are given by God to make you alive in a complete form. How is that? Allahu alam, because I don't have enough knowledge. And I don't think people have enough knowledge to explain this. And then we will come to that, to a verse from, Holy, from the Holy Quran. And the soul, yes, yes. Before moving away from the misconception, can you please talk about the soul? Because some people 
Misconceptions? Yeah, I ask people to contribute here. Well, what's your contribution now to this list? Yes, okay. Thank you. Tasawwuf. Uh, Tasawwuf is a, a topic that if we start speaking about it, I'm, I'm afraid that I'll take more time than I will not finish all the slides I have here. But in short, Tasawwuf, we have two extremes or many you know, types of Tasawwuf. Tasawwuf is mysticism in English. We call, they call it mysticism. But uh, we are not here to judge, but to say that there is some kind of a moderate mysticism in Islam. And if it is moderate, then it is Islam. If it is not moderate, it's not Islam. Whatever clashes with the teachings of Islam will not be accepted. Whatever form it takes, whatever title it takes, this is in short. So you may call it tasawwuf, but you don't have to call it tasawwuf. It's a way, what is, I mean, the moderate tasawwuf, the one that Islam accepts, it's what, I mean, is compatible with the Islamic teachings. What Allah has asked you and the Prophet, and you find something in the Prophet's tradition, then that is Islam. I don't want to call it tasawwuf. Some people gave it tasawwuf because of some, you know, uh, I don't want to go into that because there are so many I mean, uh, uh, reasons why they call it tasawwuf. Is it because they wear wool or is it because they are so beautified from, safa, from beautification? But in short, the moderate tasawwuf, as you may want to call it, is part of Islam as long as it does not clash with any of the teachings. If it clashes with one, then reject it because you are introducing something to the religion that is wrong. Like for example, in Tasawwuf, I told you it's, it's, a, continu it's, a, it's a big range of, of it's a very uh, slippery, uh, let's say, concept. People, I mean, generalize it, but there are so many schools of that. But as I told you, well, the, the thing that is wrong in, in some of the schools that they, they claim tasawwuf or purification of the soul or mysticism, they, for example, reach to a stage, they say there's a stage or a, a, a level that people should not worship God anymore. So they say, I have reached they say, okay, I have reached this, so I don't need. So this is like one of their understanding, you know, the shaytan. These, we call them the wasawis, the whisperings, or the whispering of the nafs, or the soul, or the shaytan, the shaytan, for, to deviate them from the path. But if you are mentioning Allah a lot, if you are praying at night, if you are, you know, helping people, if you are, you know, saying dhikr a lot, reciting Quran, I mean, I don't see, I mean, it should, we should call it like, you know, tasawwuf. I feel that to call it this name will actually connect it with the wrong practicing of other people who are claiming they are under such a path. In Oman, and just to clarify it, our scholars, they do not call it tasawwuf at all. Why? To avoid the negative, uh, negative uh, connotation it, it embeds. Because in, in Oman, we don't call it tasawf at all, generally speaking. We call it suluk. Suluk is, huh? no, 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 it's not, it's not behavior. It's not from behavior, behaviorism, and that's a psychological, I mean, uh, a psychology concept. It's to walk on the path, just look, to walk on the path. The path is the way of Islam, very simple, very easy. Just to follow Islam, Islamic teachings, very simple. If you are very righteous, walking on the path, the best you can, you are salik, or you are in their moderate uh, title, 
متصوف أو صوفي. Is that is that sufficient? Okay, just I mean, and I don't want to go into that, but I mean, uh, there are some people who are moderate in, on the path, and others who are extreme. Okay. Here, yes. So we finished the soul, the spirit. Let's move to the soul. What is this? What is a soul? What? What's? What do you understand now? After explaining the spirit, yes, brother. Something to feel, but we can understand what is the, what is it, or we can understand what's. Uh, yes. What is this component or something like that? Okay. How is it different from the spirit? It is in our, inside of our, our bodies. Yeah. But uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, explain about it. Okay. It is, <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. It's very difficult to define these things because they are not, I mean, clear-cut things that you can see them, you can measure them. It's very difficult, really, to measure them. But here, a soul in Arabic, here, the first one means ruh. Spirit is the ruh. But soul in Arabic is not the ruh. Although, as I told you, we use them exchangeably, exchangeably, but in reality, or in, 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 uh, technically, the soul is the nafs. The soul is the nafs. That's why I think such a session will clarify some you know, concepts that people may use them I in maybe wrongly. So the spirit. Guys, this is, as I told you, this topic is quite complicated. People try. I mean, over, hist I mean, over history, philosophers spoke about this. You, if you do, go and search, you'll find that they spoke about the spirit, they spoke about the nafs, and they spoke, spoke about the body. But the spirit itself, I mean, how can you measure it? How? Is there a way? Is there a tool? So this is like... Can you take the soul and take it to the lab? This is the argument of people who are atheists. They say, okay, we don't believe in spirits and whatever. Why? Because they cannot take the spirit to their labs. This is the, the point. Body, soul must take care of them. So since you believe in them, you need to take care of them. Okay? Because you, you believe in it. It's, see, life is, a, is about belief. Life is about belief. Once you believe in something, then it entails you to do, to do certain actions and practices. If you don't believe in something, then things, your behavior will change as well. Look at this. How do we test the soul? Tell me. Just read this. It's, uh, I, maybe you have seen it somewhere. There is a teacher here and with different animals. And he wants to test them to climb up the tree. So tell me now. Tell me how. How would he test, I mean, the animals? Who is, going, who is the winner? Huh? The monkey. The monkey will be the winner. So. How can we link this to our question? Quickly, guys. Yeah, sorry, I, I'll use the style of a teacher, because, so don't get angry. I'll ask you, because maybe people like interaction. So tell me, how can we link this to my question now, to the soul? Thank you very much, Shaheen. <laughs> Then that would mean that he is able to uh, make a right choice in the path that he has chosen. And since we are limited here only to the Islamic perspective, so I think you will be able to shed more light on it. Inshallah. Thank you. Okay, let's look at the. Uh, 
the picture here. Tell me, is it fair? No. Not fair. You all agree it's unfair. Yes. So this is how those people argue. People for, who do not believe in the spirit and they be, do not believe in the unseen, they want us to bring them a tool or a scale or a gauge that is material, materialistic, that is, I mean, touchable, tangible, to, to prove that there is a spirit. This is unfair in the, in, the, in the argument. I mean, how would you argue something that cannot happen? Then you say, I am the winner, you are the loser. So there is no spirit. We conclude that there is no spirit. Okay, so here, this is the, the, the irony behind it. So do we have enough knowledge, I mean, to, to speak about the spirit and the souls? Is, is it here and... It is here, yeah, you, everybody has a soul now, a spirit, and a soul as well. And we believe in its, in its existence. But do you believe that we have enough? Do you believe that science has, has provided us with something that we can control the unseen things? Yes, it has not. And there are a lot of things that people in the past had. I don't want to go into this discussion, but just to clarify something. That maybe if Allah wants, He can give us that kind of science or that kind of knowledge. You know Solomon, alayhi salam, the Prophet? He moved, what? The throne of, of Balqis from Yemen, right? To where? Huh? To... Huh? Yeah, Bilad al-Sham. To Syria nowadays, to that area. Maybe Palestine. How can... We believe in that, and it's mentioned in the whole Quran. He believed, I mean, he did not, of course, I mean, moved it. He asked someone. He asked the... the, 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 the not the jinns. Uh, his uh, companions. The, the, the people who were around him, whether they were genies or people, human beings. But the, 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 the Quran explained that, that he said, who can, who can bring me his, her throne? Who can? I mean, he asked the people. One of them said, I can bring it in before you, 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 you leave your, before you leave or before you stand. I don't want, I mean, قبل أن تقوم المقام people like uh, interpreters of the whole Quran. Anyway, just be, before you stand up or before you leave the, 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 uh, the place. قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ It's mentioned in the Quran. The person who had knowledge of the book, he said, I'll bring it قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرْتَدَّ إِلَيْكَ طَرْفُكَ Before a blink of an of your eye, before your eye blinks. Imagine. This is the person who had knowledge. So there, there was some kind of knowledge that can transfer or move things from one area to another area in just in a, in a blink of an eye. But now, we don't have that knowledge yet. But in the past, they had it. So it's a matter of, of Allah. It's, it's Allah who uh, provides knowledge that actually maybe in different times of history, People may not have it, so they may not believe it. But we are, as Muslims, we believe that thing happened. But we don't have that kind of knowledge yet, now, nowadays. So this is just, I mean, a clarification. So maybe the soul itself also, we haven't been given that kind of knowledge uh, to understand it fully. I mean, what do we do about that in Islam or in Islam. yeah in Islam, in Islam, a person who has a mental disease is excused from any kind of 
uh, obligation. He is not responsible to any kind of whatever you make, duties, obligations, orders, commands, he is excused. Because in Islam, the mind is the element of being responsible of your actions. If, it's give, if Allah has taken it from you, he excuses you of other things. This is the mercy of Islam. The Islam is not, I mean, Islam is a system that considers all situations, all circumstances. So if you don't have something, you should not worry. A child is not uh, responsible of his actions till he reaches the age of puberty. So that's a, a short answer, unless Matosan would like to add something to that. Nothing? Okay. So different perceptions. Look at people have different perceptions about these things, about spirit, about soul, about the body. Why do they have why do we have different perceptions? Why? Because in short, you need to know that the nature of human being the nature of a human being is to be, I mean, to have different views. Not be for the sake of disagreement or, of, of, or for the sake of being different. But we seek answers for things. We always seek answers for why we have seven planets. Why we have such and such. So people come up with, I mean, answers for things. So they understood that they have spirit. They observe things, like, look at, he died. Okay, what happened to him? His body is the same, but how come that life has left him? So they come up with answers. They have more, of course, maybe hikmah, wisdom. Maybe they are following a tradition, then other people came and changed it. So this is the nature of human beings. They like to change, they like to understand, they like to make things, I mean, clearer and clearer, even if they are not clear. So what is your concept of this? They try to, even if it is not clear, they try to make it clear. If it is not clear, they bring something from their minds or what they understand using their senses. They try to use their senses to clarify and to explain things. Whatever knowledge they have, they try to use it, even if it is very little, but to make things clear cut. And that's that what actually created differences between people. That's the main thing. They don't like things who, which are ambiguous. They don't like that. If you just pick up any topic which is ambiguous, they try to make it clear the best they can. Even Muslims, even Muslims, things that are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the whole Quran. Right? Muslims, there are some ayat in the Holy Quran, some verses in the Holy Quran are not clear. But some Muslims, they try, I mean, actually to explain them for, what, for whatever sake, for whatever reason they, they, they want. So this is the nature of a human being. But Allah told you, I mean, there are things that you should not speak about because you cannot. So, we have questions in the Holy Quran. Questions about things. The Prophet was asked some questions. And some of the questions, he did not know the answer. Who can tell me now? What are the questions that were answered in the Holy Quran fully? Thank you very much. You deserve you deserve you, you deserve something, because you answered so many times. Actually, I brought some here, some booklets for or some gifts for people who interact. So I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. I'll give you. This is for you. Yeah, you are a good student, you know. 
you are a good student. Thank Should you very much. You okay. And Karen, you have also maybe something, but I just for I forgot about it. I have it here, but I forgot about it. You will get those people who answer. Inshallah, they will get. Just to encourage students to participate more and more. Okay. So yes, your answer that was that was one. The one that he mentioned now is one. Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the spirit, did he answer? No. Of course, I mean, in the Holy Quran, the Prophet was asked about mountains. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Do you remember the verse? Yes, yes. They are asking you about mountains. They asked him, I mean, those people, you know, were raising questions. This is like, a question, I mean, a questioning mind. Huh? Yeah, out of curiosity. I mean, what's, what, what's going to happen to those, I mean, mountains in, in, on the day of judgment? No one can remove them. No one can explode them. Big, huge mountains, you know? So the answer was there. قُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَى I mean, my Lord will demolish them. I mean, completely. They will not. They will not be mountains on that day. So they were also the Prophet was asked about women. Yes or no? Do you remember the verse? There is a whole chapter in the Holy Quran called women, and there is no chapter called man. Yes or no? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. So what was the verse? Yeah. Yes. They were asking about men and say to because the Jibreel. Jibreel, actually, he came with the answer to the Prophet. So he would not actually answer them immediately. He would wait for the answer. But the question about the soul, the spirit, what happened? I'll just show you the verse, inshallah. The other, another question, what was the other question that the Prophet did not give an exact answer? What? Who can just raise your hand? Yes? Yes, thank you. The day of judgment. Yeah, they are asking him about the hour that the day of judgment will happen. He said, it's not. I have no knowledge about that. So thank you very much. I think you deserve also. Uh, hmm? Yes, can you please go and. I have here. Al Ja'ad Al Abyad. That side, please. Uh, can you go to that side, this side? No, I'm Okay, yes, so this is the verse in Arabic and in English, you know it, of course, yeah, they ask you about the spirit, say, tell them, uh, the spirit belongs to the domain of my Lord, or to the matter of my Lord, it's to, or to Allah, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means see, he did not give them an answer, the prophet did not have the answer, what does this mean? Just you need to reflect. You need to ponder on some verses. Why didn't he give them any answer? Karen, question for you. Why didn't he give them any answer? I know it's a difficult question for you. I should ask maybe Al-Mu'tasim for uh, if you just I give you a chance here. Yes. The answer is there. The answer is here. You are given only little knowledge, but I will. I would like to hear from Sheikh Matasam. Had the Quran, the way of Sheikh Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad would have answered this question. Can you say that again so they can hear? Had the Quran been the way of Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad would have showed his knowledge and would have answered this question. You got the answer, Karen. Had the Quran been the words of Muhammad, he would have shown his capability of answering all questions that people raise. Otherwise, he would not put himself in an embarrassing situation where he recorded. They asked me this question and I said no. I said I don't know. They would then, you know. So if he actually authored this book, he would have at least hid, hid this question from people. Or he would have come up with any answer. Just who would know? 
Am I right or no? So this is a sign for people that this, he, look at the answer of, of God, of our creator, what was. You were only given little knowledge. Only little knowledge. It means the little knowledge that you have will not help you to understand the nature of the spirit. Very simple. The knowledge that you have, little knowledge, cannot help you to understand what is the nature of this. You need some kind of knowledge, better, more than that, to understand it. So he gave us the result. What do we understand also from this? Yes, we know our limits. And there is no way to waste money. There is no way to waste money on this topic. Please, I mean, save money for the, for the poor. Save money for the poor nations. Because some people actually spent 20 years just trying to find more about the spirit and they couldn't. They ended up with the same result. So why do you waste money on this? In the lab or years or time. So only one verse you can stop and reflect. And this is part of spirituality. It's contemplation, pondering on some verses. This is part of worshiping. Just when you stop and try to reflect on a verse. And this is the other one, also, when he was about the, the day of judgment. Okay. So he said, I have no... He would have lied, you know, to them, say, after maybe 2,000 years. But he said, it's not. He said, it's, its knowledge is only with Allah. That's... Although he told them that I was the last prophet, but he did not lie at them or he did not. So as Ahmad Asim said, this is not his words. Okay. Okay, here, let's see how Islam or the Quran spoke about the soul. Again, since we submit, since we submit that our knowledge is limited, Let's seek knowledge from something that is from the designer of this soul. Who is the designer? Allah. So let's see how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe this soul. Now we will move to the soul, not the spirit. The soul. And then we will have a diagram that will explain where is the soul, where is the uh, spirit and the body. So look at this. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا And the soul and he who proportioned it, proportioned it, means created it, formed it, okay? فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And he inspired it with its wickedness and its righteousness. You see, Karen, now the soul inside has two qualities. So, Okay, then what? So he created it in that way, in that nature, to have two sides, to be a good person, or there's a potential that you can do wrong actions. Inside you, it's in it, it's there, it existed. So, who is going to be successful? Okay, who is going to be successful among you? Those who beautifies it, or those who beautify it, okay? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا Here it's a singular, sorry, subject singular pronoun. So, yes, yeah, successful is he, it doesn't mean he means refers to a male. Yeah, it's anyone, it's the one. So it can be male or female, but this is how it's translated, because it's translated from Arabic, zakkaha here, this pronoun refers to um, uh, ma f uh, masculine, I mean, pronoun. Or you call it, huh? Feminine? Zakkaha. No, the subject, the subject is the male pronoun, masculine pronoun. Men, Zakkaha. But ha, Zakkaha, who, who is doing this purification? He. But it refers to Zakkaha, purified it. In, our, in English, it doesn't show 
but it here, it's uh, neutral. Yes, Karen? Sorry, we are going into language now. Anyway, failing is he who corrupts it. So it is you who chooses to be good or to be bad. It's you. It doesn't have to be something that you see. So that was one, one place in the whole Quran that the soul was described. Okay, let's move on to the nafs again to the soul. Three descriptions were given to the soul. We have, I don't want to say three types, but three descriptions. The first one is nafs al-ammara bis-su. It does not clash with, uh, with the previous, uh, does not clash with this. No. That's, this, I mean, uh, it's nature. And here, what does it do? This one, fujuraha wa taqwaha, wickedness, it will ask you to do wrong things, right? And taqwaha, righteousness, will ask you to do good things, right? So there is no contradictory here. So this is one, ta one description, ammara bisu, the one that commands a person to do sins, okay? And the other one is lawama, reproaching soul. And the third one is al-mutma'inna. And these are the verses. And you know the verses, right? Okay. This is, uh, let's say, a general description of a human being. And this is not only for Muslims, just to clarify this. This is not only for Muslims. Even for Christians, the same thing. Is that right, Karim? Yeah, this is like something similar to other religions. I don't want to say religions are different from Islam. We are all from the same source. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, they actually came from one God. The message was the same, but understanding of things maybe over time has changed. Okay? So this is not only for Muslims, just to clarify this. This is the spirit. This is the circle of spirit. It's the core. It's the core of your existence. Where does it exist? Where? To the body. Inside the body, you have the spirit. Then what is in between? You have the soul. The soul is what? Is the one that controls the emotions, thoughts. It's the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. It's in the soul. Do you have any comment regarding this? Any comment, guys? Nothing? OK. Yes. So yes. I mean, this is a simplified way of the three components, three in one. You see the three in one? Ma <laughs> It's not shampoo, three in one. But it's like, this is the reality. We have them, but not to separate them. They are all together. We don't know their place. Some people tried, you know, to figure out their place. Don't waste your time on that. It's within your entity. Where? We don't know where. Allahu alam. But it's there. And these are, let's say, I am happy that we are sharing this with other, you know, with other people from other religions. Why? Because it seems that this is right, somehow. Okay? Yes, Khalfa. But it won't seem like this community may want to confuse that separate, it's like a separate entity existing in a lot of people. Not separate. Of course they are separate somehow, but not seen. We don't know how. But just to clarify to you that this is your body that is, I mean, uh, responsible for, for what? Your body. For something which is external, for something which is, you know, digestion, heart. I mean, the physical, the physical, you know, part. Then you have emotions. Where do you classify them? Is it in the body? Say, no, no, no. You should have nafs. You should have soul. So but let's put, put it there. Then we have the spirit that gives you life. Okay? 
Okay, uh, human need for spirituality. Do we really need spirituality and why? Yes, Ali. Yes, we Why? There are some things that we didn't know. We are religious, we didn't know some things that God told us. So we need the spirituality to believe God on it. Again, say that please again so I can clarify it. To believe in something that we didn't know about it. To believe in something that we didn't know about it. Yeah, for example, for example, the, the soul and, and the, uh, the heaven and the earth. Yes. Yeah, there is a need. There is a need to understand the the reality. There is a need to understand our existence. And how would you know that? By by believing. And how would you believe in what? In religion. So that's why when we say the spirit, spiritual side, or life is connected to religion, because you need you seek some answer questions. As a human being. I think we all agree that you seek some questions about who you are, why are you here, and what's going to happen to you after death. People came with different answers. So yes, there is a need to, to understand what's happening around you. Why are you on Earth? Why not on Mars? A question. Why are you, I mean, what are you doing? For how long? What's my purpose? Okay, so there's a need for spirituality. So once there is a need, people try to nourish this soul. They try to nourish it. They try to feed it with something. Where do they get that nourishment? From what they believe in. Your religion told you to do such and such, you do it. Whether you are a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Christian or a Jewish. Your religion told you to do such and such, you do it. Because you believe in that. So that's, what, that's one way to, to live spiritually, to nourish this life, to nourish that spirit. On the other side, there are some people who ignore it because they don't want to be under any religion. So I don't care of it or I will do it my way. I'll do it my way, the best I can, and I don't like someone to tell me what to do. What, Abdul Hamid? Again? Say it, don't feel shy, you get something. <laughs> yes, so in short, I mean, why do people do it? To feel relaxed, to feel happy, to feel spiritually healthy, and they are searching for happiness. This is maybe the answer you will end up with. Why are you doing thing, these things? To feel happy at the end. It's the ultimate goal. You feel happy that you are doing such and such. You are satisfied with what you do. And we'll go to the next thing. Why, what is happiness again? What is happiness? What is happiness, guys? Of course, we will end up with infinite, I mean, whatever, I mean, uh, whatever. we will not have actually, we will not agree upon the definition unless there is guidance for us what, happen, what happiness is. So look at this here, the art of happiness, the art of happiness, Dali, Dalai Lama, you know this? I mean, look at the, his face. Is he crying? He's smiling. Well, are you going to buy this book? Yes, because if you are searching, you are looking for happiness. So you find in bookshelves in most countries, there is a section for religion. And in that section, the dominant books that you find about Buddhism, That's, I don't know about America or, but I saw it in Australia. That's what's dominant in most of the religion section. Books about Buddhism, and they are smiling, they are happy, and they are using these, I mean, words that people are looking for. So you'll find someone who is smiling. I am, as a person who is looking to improve my spirituality, I will go and buy this book. 
or why to learn from it, maybe to adapt their, adapt their methods or their concepts or principles. Some people, they convert to Islam. Why? Because they also find that spiritual light that they are looking for. Some people, they are empty inside and they are looking for something. So they may find other Muslims and they explain the religion to them and they say, oh, I like your way, Bismillah, let's, I become a Muslim. Because they find what they miss. This is the nature of human being. You just try to complete yourself or to fill in what is missing. So some people become Muslims, others become Christians. There are some Christians or some people who are not Christians, they become Christians, why? Because they find that spiritual life. So we all agree that most religions, they have this spiritual life. I mean, it's there. But are you going to pick up anything just because you need that or no? I mean, if you are hungry, do you care about what you put inside or you don't care? You just want to pick up anything, Bismillah, eat it and don't care. It's healthy and healthy, fast food, slow food, I don't care. Do you care or you don't care? Okay, as a Muslim, you must care. You must care. It doesn't, I mean, of course, maybe you are hungry, you don't find any food, then if you don't find any other option, then you just pick it up. But if there are some options, you should be selective. Where do we get that from? Actually, if you just recite Surah uh, Al-Kahf, the people of the cave, the young people of the cave, what did they do when they woke up? After 300 years of sleeping, 300 years according to, 300 years and nine, 300 years according to the solar calendar, and 300 years and nine according to the lunar calendar. So after that period, what happened? They asked someone to fetch them food, yes? But they were, they, they stipulated the type of food that person must bring. Who can recall the verse? Yes, very good answer. Do you speak English or Arabic? Do you read in English? Huh? So, I'll give you this book, Matasim's book. Okay. Al-Mu'tamad. Okay, so yes, ayyuha azka ta'aman. So they were, they haven't had food for 300 years and nine. And when they asked someone to go, and of course they didn't know that they spent 300 years and nine or 300 years. But uh, they stipulated that it shows their nature that they don't just go and pick up any kind of food. They were so hungry, so they told them, bring us the purest food you find in the market. So they were, why? Because the purest food would affect your spirituality. And if you, if, you, if you believe in that or you don't believe in that, it's up to you. But the food that you put in your body will affect your spirituality. Why? Because the body is, is the bowel of, is the place where the spirit goes inside. So if the body is not clean, if the body is unhealthy, that expect something will be unbalanced in your body. This is, I mean, how we understand that those people who are so spiritual, they select the food they put inside because it affects the cells. It affects the life that came into, into it. So if you want to put something precious in a cup, first purify, clean the the thing that you want. I mean, if you want to drink pure water, do you, do you leave the mud inside? If, what do you do? You wash it first, properly. Then you put water, so after that, you drink it. Okay, it tastes very good. It tastes, uh, it tastes pure, pure water. Okay, so this is like you are hungry, your soul, your, your, your soul is hungry. How would you feed it? What type of food would you feed it? So be careful. I advise you, select the food, read about the food, read the ingredients, read the factory of the, where it's produced. Don't go just and pick it up and do it. 
because you are going to affect your spiritual life. So this is what I discussed it now, that spirit gets hungry. What do you feed it? Do you, what do you feed your body first? Before you feed your spirit, ask your body, what do you feed it? You need to th think about that. Then what do you feed your spirit? And I give you the example of the people of the cave, right? Because the food that you eat, it's either going to help you to do better deeds or will activate your maybe psy psyche, or it may create a bad mood for you. So how would you then be act? How would you worship God if your uh, spiritual, I mean, if your physical, physical side is weak, is lazy, you cannot, I mean, wake up, you cannot be active. How would you participate in the competition where, where actually you need to be physically strong? You cannot if you have, you know, a problem in your knees. First fix your body, then participate in the race. So now we agree now the ultimate goal is to be happy. And this is like the word that people always really, I mean, uh, try to explain with different understandings. So is it to be intellectual? Is it to gain more money? It is to increase your income? Is it to love or all the rest or what? What do you think? What? Anybody has an answer? Okay. Uh, a lot of studies have been done on this. A lot of research as well. And there are different, actually, conclusions. But let's see some examples. Let's see some real stories that happen to people who thought that happiness can be brought or can be, I mean, gained by, for example, money. Guys, do you believe that money will bring you happiness? No. Yes. yes, sister? Um, for me, I believe that in order to be happy, um, everyone has to have something that they really want to do. Like, for example, if I'm a poor person, I would think that money will bring me happiness. If I'm rich, Very, a very good answer, yes. At the end, I believe that to be satisfied with who you are, what you have, will end up with you. Yeah, so, so to feel satisfied with something or to gain something that you don't have. Thank you very much. Uh, do you read in Arabic or in English? <laughs> Which one you prefer? Both of You prefer Arabic? Okay, just a minute, sorry. Can you please pass it to her? Yes, this is the, you lack something, you need it, you, you, you are in need of something, you feel if you get it, I'll get this, okay, after you get that, you look for something else and so on. So does money bring happiness? To some extent, yes. Yes, to some extent, yes. It does. But is it all the time? Nothing is all the time. Nothing is all the time can bring everything for, of course, I mean, uh, so if you are concerned with money, you are more likely to be unhappy. How, how is this? Yes, who's speaking? Because he will continuously work for money and that amount for which he is working for. He will never attain that. Yeah. He will always ask for more. Thank you, Shaheen. Thank you. And as I said, happiness has different definitions. Yes, please. Huh? No, she, this is not for this answer, it's for the previous answer. Okay. Different people have different definitions about happiness. Yes. 
So it depends on you how you look at money. Is it a means or a goal? If you are so concerned about it, then if it goes, then, then what? Your life has finished because that was your life. So it finished, your life has finished. But if you believe that it's not, then if it goes, Alhamdulillah, I'm still alive. My life is with me. It's, it's not in your heart. So ignoring the spiritual life may lead to ment no mental peace, feel empty inside. There is no barakah or blessings in your life, in your house, in your relationship. You may have a miserable life. You feel stressed. You feel there is fear, but you don't know where it is. There is fear in your life. You are scaring, you are fear, uh, fearing something, maybe you're, to lose your whatever, your wealth, or your friends, or your family. Absence of goal, there is no clear goal. Okay, after you die, what happens to you? Nothing. So what are, why are you living? Just to be a good person. So what's our next? I mean, so why are you being a good person? I mean, for what sake? Just to be good. Okay, what's next? We don't know. Losing, maybe you lose faith. Okay? And if you lose faith, of course, you lose part of your element. And losing love. What is love here? What do you mean by love here? Maybe if we have time, we'll... Love. Love of everything. Love of what, whatever you want to attribute it to. Because love of God, love of people, love of, of things. Here is, I mean, a real story. I don't know if you have heard about this woman, Christina Onassis. She's from the... Have you heard about her, Karen? Yes. What do you know about her? Just... Do you remember? She was a rich woman. She was a rich woman. She actually inherited the money from her father. They classified her the, as a, the richest woman in the world at that time. She owned $250 million at the time of her death. Actually, very sad to hear this story. Really, it's sad. I mean, I felt when I read it, wallahi, I felt yani, pity towards her. Why? Because. She was rich. She got married four times. Imagine, she got married four times. She was looking for a good husband who would just, I mean, make a good family for her. He, she offered him the last husband. She offered him millions, like over 10 millions of, of dollars just to be with her. She was looking for happiness by her money. She, she bought a plane. Very sad that her husband, the last, the last husband, the, 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 the last man, I mean, I didn't write it here, but he had another relation with her, another woman. And she offered him money just to keep him because she loved him. So she thought that having all that money will make, her a, better, it will make a better life for her. But she couldn't. And she died at the age of 37, very young, because she had a disease, because of all those, you know, crises that happened to her. Do you want to add something, Karen, to this? But she tried her, her best, actually. She had all the money in the world, but how can you become happy? How? Many of us now believe, really, I, I, I understand many of you believe that having money will do things for you. Yes or no? Yes. But you don't know that thing that if it's going to make you happy or not. So what happened to her? She actually focused on the, on the relationship. She thought that loving this person would make me happy, happier. So what happened to her? That did not happen. So, she had the, a spiritual disease that affected her emotions. And some people say that she had a heart attack, but others maybe said she committed suicide. 
So this spiritual disease, if let unattended, will have this, this, uh, this, uh, this disastrous consequences, as can be seen in the story of Christina. This is one example. This is another person who won a lottery. And see what happened to him. He became rich. And he won $31 million. A year and a half later, after spending money, like water, and losing his wife. He lost his wife. I don't know why they lose partners when they get money. I don't know what happens. He committed suicide. Huh? Maybe the partners find someone else. There's no money. Allahu Akbar, I don't know. He was generous. This person was very generous. But subhanAllah, because this is like if you, be, if you worship money, then if your God died, what happened to you? If your, if your God died, what happened to you? Your life is pointless. Huh? Yes, your life is pointless. So they worship money. This is the problem. I don't mean worshiping that they put them in front of them. Oh, oh, money, you are my Lord. They don't say that. But the actions would tell you that you appreciate them more than anything else. You love them more than anything else. If you love that, then that is kind of, that is your God. Who is God? It's the one that you love the most. And you appreciate that he brought you. He is blessing you. He is making you, I mean, bringing favors to you. That is your God. So this guy, just to mean, he, this is what happened to him. And this is what he said. Winning the lottery is the worst thing that ever happened to me. And this lady, I forgot to tell you that this lady, when she was interviewed, what did she say? What? Are you the richest woman in the world? She said, yes, but I am, what? Also the unhappiest. So be careful, guys, how you use your money. In Scandinavia, in Scandinavian countries, they are the rich, richest countries in the world. This is in Northern Europe. But the rate of suicide is very high. Although they have all the things, they have everything. All the materialistic life, they have it. So why do they commit suicide? Who knows why? Devoid of spirituality. Of course, this is one. Weather and depression. But how? How can you get out of depression? The point, because, because they don't have an ultimate goal. This is very simple. In Islam, to commit a suicide, you are committing a major sin that will take you out of religion because you are destroying something very precious that cannot be brought back to life. It's better, I mean, it, like killing a soul, uh, killing someone, is like killing all people. And you're giving life to one person as if you are giving life to all people. So you don't have the right to, to, take, to take your life away. You don't have the right. Because this is, you didn't bring yourself. It was given to you. So you should keep it till the end. It, it's taken from you. Why do you, I mean, who are, I mean, who gave you the authority to just take this life away from you? You did not, you were not given the authority when you were young. Why do you just, I mean, now take it out? So you are destroying life. You are destroying the earth by killing yourself. So that's why in the Muslim world, you don't, it's, the percentage is very small. And those who actually commit suicide in the Muslim world, they are, let's say, because they are not good believers. Because they are not following the religion. That's, that's simple. As simple as that. So just we want to conclude here the, 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 uh, this area of money. How would you, how do you, I don't think, do we have enough time or? I think we have more things to, I want to speak about what is the Islamic way of gaining spirituality. But here is about money. I want you to think just about what happens, how do you react when calamities come onto you, when you don't achieve what you want? Ask yourself these questions. Do you blame others? Do you blame yourself? How? 
Do you doubt the creator that he did not give you this? So I get angry at him? How do you, I mean, what do you do? Do you believe in the conspiracy theory? You know conspiracy theory? Someone is putting something on me or, okay. So position of material rich, uh, riches without inner peace is like dying of thirst while bathing in a lake. So true happiness lies in faith. This is the true happiness. If you really, I mean, think about it seriously, it's there and there's a study here, although I haven't quoted I mean, the researchers, but this is done in the US, that the happy people among different, you know, atheists, they were the least happy, 60%, and the believers, 36, and the new believers, they were 40%. And this is a person who was not a Muslim, and he became a Muslim, and he wrote a book. Uh, anyway, what he said here, he said that, look at the West. The West is suffering from a vast spiritual void, which no principle or faith could fill to bring about happiness, despite the affluence there and the so-called economic prosperity, whatever. I mean, those people in the West, they still, they what, still has a sense of worthlessness. Sorry, well, I just skipped something. Anyway, I just want to say here that people actually now maybe convert to Islam because they find there is something, there is spiritual life there that uh, feeds their spirit. Challenges of our time, this is uh, something that I want to discuss with you. Materialism. Materialism. And one of the big challenges now, and you can observe it, even here in the Omani society, that people are more into materialism now. Do you agree? Or, or are they now into spirituality? There is a trend now, it's becoming fashion to possess things. I don't want to give examples, maybe you can, you can share something. Is materialism is now taking place? It is. Hmm? Yes, I'm not saying that materialism is evil. We need both a spiritual life and a material life. We need both things. But I'm saying that people now, they are more into this and in something which is unnecessary. Like, what do you think? Buying or wearing a 10,000 riyals, a 10,000 10, riyal watch. Tell me, what does it reflect? What does it mean to, I mean, why do you drive Lamborghini in Oman? Porsche or, uh, and why? Yeah, and they are radars, you cannot use it for its purpose. I mean, it's, it was designed for a purpose. What's the point? You come to university with Land Rover. I don't know how much it is, but I saw some female students. They come to university with Land Rover. She, I, I'm not saying it's wrong, but, I mean, why is it Land Rover and with a special number? I mean, the question is here, something is heading somewhere. Why buying unnecessary things? So guys, this will affect your spirituality. You cannot, I mean, I'm not saying to, you know, to have a, luxuri a, luxuri a luxurious car, but I mean, it seems that it's becoming common now and it will become culture. And if it becomes culture, you will be in trouble, guys, all of you, even you who are not, I mean, supporting that. It will be part of culture to drive a Land Cruiser or Land Rover. It will be part of culture to have wedding in such and such a palace, in such and such hotel, because my sister got married there, because my neighbor got married there in that hotel. Everybody is getting married in that hotel. Why, why should, shouldn't be me, I, I mean, who is going to get married there? Everybody is having such and such. Why not you? 
So you cannot live in the society after that. If materialism is becoming, I mean, dominant, then be careful. I mean, life will be difficult for other people. And do not think that people who have, I mean, they are living in this materialism, they are, I mean, able, or they are capable, or they can afford it. Many of them, they have loans. From where? From their friends? From banks. And this is another issue. We can discuss it, but that's if we have time, we can discuss it. Huh? Usury. The banks. I mean, I mean, this is a very bad or a very bad reality. How? We claim we are Muslims. Yes? Yes. Why do you take a loan from the bank? Because I want a big car. I want such and such. Okay. Is it haram or not haram? It's not only a, a normal haram. It's not like, I don't want to mention other things so we equate them, no. But it's not like, what? Tell me. Because if I mention it, I'm afraid you take it as, as a comparison, as like an equal. No. Like what, Matasam? Lying to a child. Okay, can I say something and you tell me? Is it the same level? But I'm not encouraging the other thing to, do, to be done. Is it like drinking wine? Or is it more dangerous? <laughs> yes. Can you speak loudly so the others can hear? Yes. Consuming usually is one of the major sins, the seven sins in Islam. And uh, it was uh, authentically reported that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, uh, usually is of uh, 27 sections, and the least of which is like one commits fornication with his mom. See? Was it that the like Yes, but people see. They do it. I'm sorry for, for such people. Destructors. Challenge is one of the challenges of, of, of actually of spirituality. A lot of destructors now. Our young people, they are so occupied with unnecessary things like social media. Although social media can be, I mean, useful. But if you just, I mean, have a survey, you will see that they are following what? I mean, I'm talking here about, not individuals, but about the majority. It is abused more than it is utilized. Yes. And it is taking them away from spirituality. I mean, they are busy with things that they should not be busy with. Some people are distracted by, by news. They just like to follow news all the time. What's happening here? What's happening in China? What's happening in Africa? What's happening in Russia? And all their time is just following the news. And they are obsessed about that as if someone will ask them the other day or the next day. So maybe someone will ask me, what should I say? This is what they answer you. If, if you tell them, why are you doing such and such? Because I should know. Who told you that you should know? So if you ask them, what have you done? I mean, I, I, Yani, which one is, is more important, to just spend like three hours in front of TV or visiting your relative? I mean, visiting your relatives is part of, of religion, is part of spirituality, one of your obligations. But they haven't seen maybe their mom or their uncle or their auntie for months. And if you ask them, they don't know. So they don't know their priority. They don't have time. They don't have time. Yes, thank you. When you ask them, I don't have time. But you have time to watch football matches at 2 o'clock at night. Or they call it in the Western, I mean, uh, BM, AM in the morning, although it's not morning, it's night. OK, time. Yes, they say no time for spirituality. Students are busy at school or at university. All their time is in their, in their study. But please, I mean, do not let this, I mean, keep you away from your self. You need to sit with yourself. Of course, I mean, being busy with, with, with study is also part of spirituality. If you believe that, you will be rewarded for it. 
like as a student of knowledge, a seeker of knowledge, you are rewarded for that. So have that belief that you are coming here, you are busy with something good. I mean, studying, coming to university is part, is, is one, one type of worshiping God. And you are rewarded for that, for every step, for every, I mean, lecture that you attend. So once you do that, you will turn it from a normal act to an act of worship. You will be rewarded. So don't say, I haven't done something good today. No, you did. You came to the class. You listened to the teacher. You met your friends. So don't say, no, I have heard this a lot. Maybe some mothers, they would say, we haven't done, we haven't done such and such. We haven't prayed at night. I mean, you don't have to pray like in a form of prayer. But taking care of the child at night maybe is worth more than, I mean, praying alone. Actually preparing food for your family members. It's, 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 it's an act of worship. So helping your fathers, mothers, friends, neighbors. Don't say I haven't done. Because people, they just think like reciting Quran, that's the only act of worship. No, whatever you do, just link it. Link it to your ultimate goal. How to be happy? I'm not sure if we don't have time, we have maybe to just delay and quit here. And next week, maybe if we have time, we can continue. What do you think, Sheikh Mahmoud? Yes, we stop here because still I, have, I haven't spoken about how to walk on the path. Like some advice, uh, how to be happy here is in the point, what is the believer's, you know, feeling or view. So, and here, how to evaluate yourself. So I think I need to stop, right? How much time is given, is left? Five minutes, I'll keep it for discussion. I haven't finished it, I'm sorry. It took, I mean, more than I expected. Yes, any question? Yes, Sheikh Matasam. Can you tell us what's so special about Islam when it comes to fulfilling the spiritual needs? MashaAllah, this is your... Distinguishing. I think you should answer this question. <laughs> What is, okay, the question again. What is so special? What is the distinguishing point? What is the distinguishing point when practicing Islam? Oh, no, when it comes to fulfilling the spiritual needs. Spiritual needs. How Islam fulfills the spiritual needs? Yes. So special, you mentioned that in different traditions, there is this element of fulfilling the spiritual needs. Oh, yes, I mean, see, spiritual side. yes, spiritual side is what? It's linked to your purpose. Why are you here? I mean, see, when do you feel happy? Generally speaking, not about religion. When do you feel happy? When you achieve your goals. I, my goal, to get an A in such and such a course. When you get that, I feel, alhamdulillah, I have achieved my goal. Today, I have such and such to-do list. When I achieve that, you have some kind of happy so the same thing with islam if you believe that you have a purpose in life and what's your purpose of course you want to be very close from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i mean i mentioned that later i mean the purpose of your existence here to recognize god once you recognize him you must know about him and if you know him you will love him and if you love him you want his huh? closer. So have you, have you satisfied yourself? Have you achieved these goals? Have you known him? Have you known him enough? A, a true Muslim or the person who walks on this path, the wayfarer, will not feel satisfied. You will not, although you have reached like a person of knowledge, you want more, you enjoy it, you want more and more. So, after every stage, you want to achieve an, the other stage. It's a long life journey. It's not going to end as long as you are alive, but you elevate yourself spiritually. What do you gain out of this path? Purification of the soul. Number one, you will be a very purified person. 
because your soul will be very purified. You will reach to a level, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you will not have sins because this is the outcome of walking on the path. You will walk and walk and walk and you elevate yourself spiritually so you are purifying yourself. You are becoming closer to Allah and you will be like an angelic creature, like an angel. The angels. So you will be like angels that you fulfill what you are, is required from you and you just avoid wrong things. Where is your maqam? Where is your Allah? We don't know your, where you are. You just leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you believe that. Why do you do this? The answer can be, I mean, you can have different answers. You can do it. Uh, this is like the, one of the la la last slides. It's the waking up. Have you woken up? If yes, what makes you to wake up? Is it because you are looking for paradise? Or is it because you are afraid of hellfire? Maybe one of the two. Or I am not scared of hellfire and I am not doing this for paradise. I am doing it because just for one thing, just to worship the creator because he created me and he dignified me and he put me in this, in his universe, in his universe. So I just do this for the sake of love. This is a very higher stage. You do it for the sake of love. You don't do it for other things. And this is a higher level that people reach. Like why I'm doing this? I don't want a salary from you. Why are you working with me? Just because I love you. I work with you. I like to serve you. Because when I was young, you helped me. You, you helped my family and you helped me. So I just, you know, devote my life for you. If this is like in a, materialistic, in a materialistic context, someone helps you a lot and you just want to repay that. So I do it for the sake of love. I don't want salary from you. I don't want a salary for myself. I am very happy. I feel satisfied when I serve you. This is the, one of the highest, I mean, uh, levels that a person will reach after being so spiritual. And what is the purpose of spirituality? The purpose of spirituality to be righteous. The ultimate goal of being, of worshiping Allah, of praying or fasting or any other act of worship, to be righteous, to be pious. This is the goal. Because once you reach this stage, you are so pious, you are so righteous, you will be what? This is, huh? Admitted. Yes. You will be the beloved person and every creature will love you even the 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 other creatures will send their blessings to you and you will be loved Allah nada Allah ala annani aqad ahbabtu fulanan fa ahibbuh right and then everything will love you I mean whether people or other things because Allah loves you once Allah sends his love to you you don't have to worry. And then, alhamdulillah, I have, I have achieved the goal. But you may not know that where you are till the day of judgment. So you cannot achieve righteousness without religion. Let's, let's say it, I mean, frankly. You cannot reach this stage without religion. Why? Because how do you know something is right or wrong? Tell me how. How do you know? How? Karen, how do you know something is right or wrong? How? No, there are things that you know, but for example, usury, had a riba, how do you know it's haram? I mean, apparently, it's like selling. You get benefit. Okay, I'll give you 1,000 riyal, you return it 1,200 riyals. Okay, it's fine. I get 200 extra, 100 riyals extra. It doesn't, and it's not like bad. Is it bad? He gives me two extra because I lent him the money. So apparently, you don't know that this is haram. Imagine in Islam, this is worse, I mean, than drinking wine. 
Allah, it's the only sin in the Holy Quran that Allah has declared war. Has declared war against the person who is actually, I mean, taking interest because of loans. Imagine. So how do you know this is right or wrong? So by following the religion, by following the teachings of Islam, you can, be, you can reach that stage. Otherwise, you cannot. Because you don't know what is right, what is wrong. Islam it teaches you what is right, what is wrong. What is right, what is wrong. On the path, do this, don't do this. Okay? So then you can reach it. Otherwise, if you just follow what you think is right, you will maybe kill people. Maybe you, you steal. How do you know it's wrong? I just like this. Why don't I steal it? You know one person what he said? I mean, to break the rules of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, for the, of the traffic, is it right or wrong? Why is it wrong? OK, let me ask you, and I want you to answer. When you drive with a certain speed, let's, act, let's say it is 100 or 80. If you don't see police, tell me the truth. Do you exceed the limit or you don't? Tell me the truth. I mean, if the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the limit is 80 kilometers per hour, you are driving alone in that open area. I mean, no police is there. No radars, no police. Tell me the truth. No, 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 just we want to see here. This is very connected to our topic. Very connected. Tell me the truth. Do you exceed the limit or no? Huh? Guys, don't feel, no, no, don't change the answer because you expect another question. No, I mean here, normally people exceed, right? Why do they exceed? Because no one is watching. Because no one is watching. So, one person, actually this happened to one person. They were like a group of cars, they were driving, then they saw the police in front of them, so they slowed down. Except one person, he did not. He just, I mean, he was exceeding the, the limit. And the police stopped him. Hey, why don't you slow down like other people? You know what he said? He said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. He said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. He said, how? He said, I mean, I know the rule. But I don't want just because of you, I slow down. So he said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Take a yes, take a ticket. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, so no, he was frank. Maybe he was not given a ticket because he was frank and, and he didn't want to be a hypocrite. So the same thing here. Do you have, do you have uh, someone, do you, do you have a self-mentor, checker? Do, yes. Do you, do you, I mean now, in Islam, or do you need someone who is from outside to tell you? So this is how it works. You do it not because you are afraid. Some people, they are afraid of the society. They call it, I mean, shame, shame guilt, or shame culture. Shame culture, and we have guilt culture. So some people are afraid, uh, they are ashamed of other people. So that's why we call it, I mean, shame culture. Others, they call it guilt culture. Maybe in Christianity they call it guilt culture, right? Just because they don't want to do it because they don't want to be guilty. But in Islam, you should have a shame culture, not from people, but from the Creator. You, you see, I mean, the point here? I mean, you should have, this is what's the maqam of Ihsan. The maqam of Ihsan that I planned actually to speak about here, the maqam of Ihsan, here. أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. You worship God as if you are seeing Him, and if you don't see Him, He sees you. He's watching you. So you are in the presence of God, in the presence of the Divine. في الحضرة الإلهية في القدسة الإلهية. You are at that, I mean, uh, level. So how can you do sins if you are there? Tell me how. How? Can you commit sins if you are in that level? You will not, because you are in the presence of the divine. 
Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk Allahumma wa natubu ilayk. I'm not sure if I'm going to explain this next week or... But do you have any question? I hope that I answered your question, Sheikh Mu'tasam. Thank you. Any, any question? Any inquiry? Yes. I have a doubt. Uh, I just want to confirm uh, regarding this materialism we are told. Suppose someone who can afford to buy a luxury, but does it without any bank loan or any financial constraints. Is it still considered as materialism or how? <laughs> لا لا هذه هذه مسألة هذه هذه مسألة فقهية يعني ما مسألة رأي ما مسألة الرأي مسألة تلهم بس من كم كم هير عند أنصرهم كم 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 over here كم كم over here يلا تفضل تفضل yes actually I'm telling my my own estimation my own answer there is, I, I, I don't think there is a right or wrong for this question. And um, in the Quran, we find the Almighty God says, Let each one spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. So I couldn't say that the one who has 10 million Omanian, if he bought an end closer, he's exaggerating here. He's uh, reaching the excess limits. But I would say that if the one whose monthly income is two or three hundred Oman Riyas has committed and he bought such um, uh, expensive car, he has really committed exaggeration or extravagance. So it depends on the person, but there is a reasonable uh, level. As Mr. Uh, said, there's a reasonable level, this is what I believe. Buying a watch, buying a five or a 10,000 Umar Riyal watch is uh, extravagance. No matter how much wealth you have, uh, five billions, five millions, no matter what you have, because this is beyond the, the reasonable level. So this is my perception. It depends on the person, on his income. But on the other hand, his expansion doesn't or has to be within the reasonable limits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I yes, hope you can add something to this. Yes, thank you. And I will not add fatwa here, but I will add wisdom. Yes, halas. wisdom. It's a matter of wisdom. Okay, and what is the, yani the wisdom, the meaning of wisdom, to put things in the right thing. Just, do you really need that? A question. Ask yourself these questions. Do you really need it? If you really need it, buy it. Maybe it's going to solve some problems. Who knows? It depends on your problems. I don't know what kind of problems. Yeah, so ask yourself, do I really need it? If yes, what kind of need is that? Is it urgent? Is it, if I don't have this, what, um, what am I going to lose? Because you are, يعني, Allah will ask you, and this is the hadith, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَا عَبْدِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ عَنْ خَمْسِ مِنْ ضُمْنْهَا وَنَوْبِتْ عَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَهُ On the day of judgment, you will be asked about the wealth that you owned, you possessed, where you got it from, and what have you spent it on. Be ready for that question. If you have the answer, tawakkal Allah. Because it's not, the wealth that you have, it's not only for you. You have haqq for this. Yes, this wealth that you have is not only for you. It is for you and for others. Have you given its right? Have you given its right? People around you, your family, your friends, the needy people in your neighbor. Society. Yes, society. Islam is not about, I mean, being spiritual is not for the individual. To be a light for everybody, for the community, to help other people. Okay? Allah? 
جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب اليك اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم انا نسالك التقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها اللهم اجعلنا هداة المهتدين غير ضالين ولا مضلين سلما لأولياءك حبا على أعدائك يا رب العالمين May Allah guide us to the truth May Allah bestow his mercy on us May Allah send his blessing on us Oh Allah we ask you to guide us to the truth and to increase our knowledge and to elevate us in your uh, to elevate us spiritually يا رب العالمين وصلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم